Hello and welcome. My name is Stefan Czech. I'm a DOP, certified Glidecam trainer and operator and filmmaker from Germany. In collaboration with Glidecam US, I produced this series called Glidecam Training. To get the most out of your handheld stabilizer from Glidecam, I will show you how to stand properly, how to move the system up, down, forwards and backwards, how to go over obstacles or in circle. Before we start, make sure that your system is perfectly static and dynamic balanced and at a drop time between 1.5 and 2 seconds. And today we want to have a closer look on the focal length. So the focal lengths, they make sense on your glide cam. Is it the ultra wide or medium wide angle? What is this we are looking for? Of course, the same as every DOP, he wants to get the best for his shot. But first we have to answer a question. Which kind of camera would we use? Is it a 5D Mark II, Mark III or an A7S with a full frame sensor? Or is it an S35 sensor machine with um, yeah, a smaller sensor like the C100 and the uh, FS7? Or even a GH4 from Panasonic with a, a Micro Four Third sensor? To make it more visible, I show you this scene. This is shot on the 5D Mark II with a 14 mm And now you see what an S35 sensor will see. And this is a GH4 with a 14 mm So you can imagine how wide your lens should be if you want to get this shot or even this shot with a GH4. And it makes totally sense to use a wide angle or a ultra wide on your glide cam. There's two reasons for this. First, it makes easier to look smooth and steady. And second, our normal vision with our eyes is wide, it's 170 degree. So it's not a telic lens we have in our eyes. Uh, another good lens is the 16 to 35. 16, of course, is not so wide as in 14, but it's wide enough, especially on a full frame sensor. Here on a 5D Mark III, the 16 to 35 in 60 millimeter, it's pretty damn good. It's a all round lens for this glide cam work, I would say. It's a really versatile lens. I use it. Uh, very often in low mode and because of the high quality you can come closer to your subject without any big distortion. The same lens on a C500 with an S35 sensor you will see it looks much more narrow, narrow to your subject. And the reason for this is the uh, crop factor in comparison to the full frame sensor of 1.4. But there is another reason I love this ultra wide lens on my glide cam. It gives a much um, more cinematic look, especially when you have uh, a nice motif and you have some interesting surroundings. Like here in a scene I shot for a short movie called Hensel uh, with a 11 to 24 from Canon. Not a cheap lens, I know. But as you see, you have nearly no distortion at the corner and it looks beautiful. Back in 2008, we shot the very first music video on a Canon 5D Mark II. For the master shot, I used the 50mm 1.2 from Canon, as you see with an, a tremendous shallow depth of field. And the surrounding with a 50mm was not easy. To shoot this with a C100 or FS7, you need a 35mm lens to achieve the same angle of view. In my opinion, don't go too wide when you go closer to a person. In this case, it's a 24mm on a full frame sensor. It's equivalent to a 16mm on a S35. This is shot with a 70mm. To uh, get my shot, I put my motif in the center of a circle on the ground so I can keep the distance to my motif. And this is important because in this configuration I can't change my focus and it helps me to keep my person in the right portion of the framing. 
because there is no short answer to how you keep everything in focus and how you manipulate your focus while you're running around with your glide cam, I will produce an extra episode for this. But now I have a tip for you, especially when you use older lens or manual lens, like this Distagon 2.8 15mm from Carl Zeiss. And it comes with a really cool scale. And the scale shows you exactly the depth of field, depending on the aperture you choose. For instance, if you choose an aperture of 8, you get a depth of field between 90 cm and infinity. You will find this scale only on manual or older lens, because all the newer optics are made for autofocus. But there are autofocus lens with this scale. For instance, the 40 mm from Canon, the first version. The scale is really useful and you can use the autofocus if you have a camera to support this. But this is another topic. But for now it's enough. Go out, train with your Glidecam, have a lot of fun with this. And best regards, your Stefan Czech.